Have you ever wondered how to evaluate the logarithm of a given matrix, or are you perfectly normal? Thankfully, that's not the case for me and my viewers, which is why I'm making this video. We're going to be exploring how to take the logarithm of a matrix field, and that sounds extremely cool, but how is this thing even defined? Well, it's defined in analogy to how we define the logarithm as an infinite series. Recall that the logarithm of 1 minus x can be expanded as the sum over the positive integers k of x to the k divided by k. So translating this into matrix form, we have the logarithm of 1 being replaced by its counterpart among the set of matrix fields, which is the identity matrix, minus the matrix M equal to the sum over K of M to the K divided by K. So whatever the infinite series on the right-hand side converges to is the logarithm of the matrix I minus M. Now let's take the given matrix and call it the matrix A. So we're looking for a matrix M such that I minus M equals A. This, of course, implies that m equals i minus a. So i in this case is the 2 by 2 identity matrix, that is 1, 0, 0, 1, minus the matrix a, which is given as 2, 3, 0, 1. So this sorts out to negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0. That's our matrix m. So we have the logarithm of our matrix a being equal to the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k times this matrix m, that's negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0, to the k. So we're now interested in the integer powers of the matrix m. Starting off with the obvious, we have m to the 1 being m, of course. And now for m squared, m squared equals m times m, so that would be negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0 times the exact same matrix. That is negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0. So performing matrix multiplication gives us 1 here, a 0 there, 3 here, and another 0. So that's m squared. And notice it looks strikingly similar to the original matrix m. Specifically, it's the negative of the matrix M. And using this equation, we can decipher higher powers of the matrix. For example, M cubed would be M squared times M, and M squared is just negative M. So we have negative M times M, which is negative M squared, which is again M. Similarly, M to the fourth power would be negative M. So we conclude that M to some even number equals negative m, and m to some odd number equals positive m. Okay, so we can conclude that m to the k equals negative 1 to the k minus 1 times m, where now we have, for k being even, a negative sign, and k being odd, a positive sign. Now returning to the question of the logarithm of the matrix A, we have the sum over k of m to the k divided by k, right? So that sorts out to the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k times m. And because the matrix m here is just a constant matrix independent of the index variable k, we can treat this as a case of multiplication of the matrix m by the scalar that is the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k, which is, of course, the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 1. Now, to work out the value of eta 1, that is exactly what this infinite series converges to, we're going to make use of the series expansion for the logarithm again. But this time, for log 1 plus x. So that sorts out to the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times x to the k divided by k. And notice the only missing ingredient here is x equal to 1. That would give us exactly the series we need. 
So using this value of x, we have the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k equal to the logarithm of 2. So that means log a equals log 2 times the matrix m. And we can conclude that the logarithm of the matrix 2, 3, 0, 1 equals negative log 2, negative 3 times log 2, a 0 here and a 0 there. Okay, that was insanely cool, but it's not exactly where the fun stops. Recall I made a video integrating a matrix field where I made use of the matrix exponential function. We have e to a matrix m defined as the sum over the non-negative integers k of m to the k divided by k factorial. For example, we could use the matrix m that we used in this video that was negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0. And we do have m to the k equal to negative 1 to the k minus 1 times m, but for the infinite series, we have an additional term of k equal to 0. So we have e to the matrix negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0 equal to, for the k equals 0 term, we have 1 by 0 factorial, which is of course 1, times m to the 0, which is defined as the identity matrix. So we have i plus the sum over k starting at 1 of m to the k divided by k factorial, m to the k being negative 1 to the k minus 1 times m. So now we have i plus the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k factorial, because m is, once again, just a constant matrix independent of the index variable k. And what exactly is this infinite series? Recall that the exponential function e to the x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k divided by k factorial. So if we let x equal to negative 1, we have e to the negative 1 equal to the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k factorial. So what we need here is a negative sign to account for that extra negative 1. And again, for the k equal to 0 term, we're going to have 1. So this implies that the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k factorial equals 1 by e minus 1. And this, of course, means that e to the m equals, it's the identity matrix i plus 1 minus 1 by e because of that negative sign times the matrix m. So we know how to take the logarithm of a matrix and we know how to use the matrix exponential function. So let's work with something that looks ridiculous at first sight, but of course it can be worked out using ideas from the exponential and the logarithm of a matrix. What if we take a matrix and raise it to another matrix. I mean, why not? For the case of two complex numbers, z and w, we have z to the w defined as e to the w times log z. So let's take a matrix A and raise it to another matrix B as e to the b times the logarithm of the matrix A. So just as a bit of homework for you guys, and girls, of course. Evaluate 2, 3, 0, 1 raised to, let's use the same numbers. I mean, why not 1, 3, 0, 2? Using the ideas from this video and comment down the matrix you get. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.